Good morning and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Saturday and that is day 42. Day 42 on Bill's schedule out of Villa Feliz. And today is going to be a lot of continuation of yesterday, which is going to be a continuation of tomorrow and the day after and the day after. We're going to be doing a lot of the, the form work. Remember, we got to get all that steel in place before we do that giant, huge uh, cement pour in a couple of weeks. So anyway, they're going to be doing that. At, I always try to think ahead of what my contractor is planning on doing for the day. And uh, sometimes it's change up. Well, many times it's change up to what I think they're going to be. Uh, actually doing out there. So I'm not even going to speculate as to what other things might happen on the site today. So we'll have to see when we get out there. Anyway, please tell me somebody behind me isn't watching me right now because I just realized this morning I ran out of doggy treats and I was actually down at the mall yesterday as you saw and I forgot to get doggy treats. So Oh no. Anyway, uh, I hope you'll forgive me and I will have to look for some as soon as possible. So anyway, uh, I need to get out to the job site now and, uh, and see what's going on for today. And I might do some catch up, even if the wind isn't too bad, which is a little bit of wind here already this morning. Uh, hopefully it will calm down a little bit and maybe I can do a little bi coupo time or something like that. But anyway, and uh, let's get out to the job site and uh, without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Ah, good morning, Jeff. Good morning. How are you today? Taking Doggy out? What, what is Doggy? What is it's Doggy? A beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hey, Serafina. <laughs> <laughs> Take him out for the walk, morning walk, huh? Yeah. Ah, good morning. morning. How are you today? You, you yeah. like dog's collar? Yeah. It's good? Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Well, have a great day. I'll, yeah. I'll see you later. Hey, Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Good morning. Hello. Good morning again. <laughs> again? <laughs> okay. uh, hello. Good morning. How is everybody? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Hey, good morning, Roy. Oh, man. Is that a new puppy? Yeah. Who, who, you, Three for months you, old. you or Michelle? Yes. Both? You, oh, you have, this, oh, are you selling them or uh, what? Let me see. Oh, that's so yes, cute. Yes, I sell them. You're selling them? Yes. What kind of, what kind of dogs are these? Pomeranian. Pomer Pomeranian. 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 Yes. Oh, I haven't seen Pomeranian around here. Oh, well, yeah, look at that. They're beautiful. Oh, look at the other ones. Oh, I gotta get a, I gotta get a picture of them. Yeah, no, no, I'll pick this one. No, no, it's very wide. <laughs> hey! Hey! Hey guys! Oh, they're so cute! <laughs> You're in the pet business too now? Uh, they're beautiful. The sky? Oh, uh, the birds! Ah, uh, good, good morning. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, it's a kite. The yo. kite. That's what she's saying. Ah, uh, good morning, Michelle. Ah, uh, the kite. The kite. Ah. Yes. Yeah, oh, I see that. Somebody's flying a kite. Uh. So, how, so how much do Pomeranian puppies cost? Do you want? Well, I, I have no. I can't take care of a puppy right now. This one is called Alpha. How many? Ten. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. Ten. Ah. Don't get boxy. Three dogs. Three dogs. So thirty thousand for no, all three. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Yeah. Get boxy. Get boxy. Fine. I'll ask. I'll ask some of the people out yeah. in the subdivision because. Complete. Oh, all the all the proper yeah. vaccinations. Ah, do they have? 
babies. Do they have papers over here? No. You don't get the paper, but no. you know what I'm talking about. In the U.S. More expensive. Yeah, very expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It costs 15,000 each. With the papers. With the papers, yeah. but 10,000 yeah. without the paper. But the, you could tell they're pure. They're pure. Yeah, you could tell they're pure bread. They're, be they're beautiful. Uh, and they don't get so big either. Yeah. They stay small. Very good, very good lap pet. They call this teacup, the small one. Uh, this is a teacup. A teacup? Yeah. Ah. Uh, good morning, Tess. How are you? How are you today? Hi. Oh, it's going to be a hot one today. Uh, I think it's going to be very hot. Yes. Very hot, yeah. So, what are you cooking tonight? Uh, chicken with coconut milk and fish with coconut milk also. Fried fish, then I will put coconut milk. So, it's, so let's do the chicken. I like the chicken. Chicken that's, that's, that's coconut with the coconut milk. Chicken's my favorite. One only? One only, yeah. Thank you. Yes. All right, and you have a wonderful day. Stay cool. I'll see you later, bye bye. Lola Janet? Lola Janet? Okay, I will call you Lola Janet. All right. James? Yes? If they ask you, yeah? the price is nine. Okay, okay. Fixed price. Special price for yeah. them. All right, I will ask. Okay, thank All right. you, James. All right, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Lola Janet. Yeah. See you later. Well, I almost left my uh, umbrella back at the room this morning because I looked at the sky and it was so nice and blue and clear. But now look, I don't know. It changes like this. It, it, it changes like crazy around here. You never know. So anyway, those, those are... Um, some mahogany trees there. Uh, it's my friend Walter. Remember Walter? Runs the little sorry star, sorry story store here. Well, anyway, he's got all the, he's got mahogany trees and he has mangoes and all kinds of stuff that he that he has out in front of his store. And uh, he, he offered he offered me one yesterday, but I I told him I said I'm I have a problem with mahogany trees. I need to get rid of mahogany trees. But uh, he also has, uh, like I said, some fruit trees. But some of the fruit trees are pretty big. And, and so what I told him, I want to get some dwarf varieties of the trees similar to the ones that he has, like, like the, uh, the dwarf mango. And uh, he said he knows a place, and I think he said it's near Laguna, or there was another place that he was telling me about. So he's gonna actually, uh, he and I are gonna take a ride one afternoon, and we're gonna go down and take a look at some uh, uh, plant nurseries as well. So. That should make for a wonderful afternoon video session. Good morning. Ah, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Anyway, on site here, everybody is busy like they normally are this time in the morning. Uh, the, the activities that are going on and what I described this morning and what they were doing yesterday when I left, just basically digging holes in the ground uh, for the footers, for the fencing that's going to go around, the formwork, and well, the formwork and the steel uh, formwork over here. And uh, I just want I want to mention something again. I, I mention it, and I will continue to mention it uh, in episodes when it's prevalent to that specific part of the building. But I want you to pay particular attention to where the column meets the beam here. Uh, and what I want to do is, when these guys take a break later on, and I'm not in their way, uh, maybe at lunchtime, uh, I'll try to crawl up there uh, if it's safe enough for me to get up there. And I want to show you the details of that intersection where they splice everything in. Because this this area right here, 
the intersection, uh, hopefully I got it right here. This intersection right here is the most important part of the, uh, of the build for the, for the strength and the integrity of your floor and your, your columns and beams is right here. So you'll notice, you'll see, it seems like there's a lot more of the, of the uh, stirrups and the, and the ties right in this area right here. And, uh, and I explained that when we were actually doing the beams uh, for the basement floor, and I'll explain that again once I can get over there so I can give you a little bit more detail, but that's very important, and we'll get a close-up detail of that. Well, anyway, the guy, it's, it's about 10.30, and the guys are on a break right now, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to crawl over here and uh, explain some of the things about the the columns and the beams here. I know I discussed uh, it several times in earlier episodes, but for the uh, the new subscribers and the guys that are actually coming on and visiting, uh, if they did not go back to the earlier episodes, this will be sort of like a refresher kind of a thing. So anyway, uh, here you have the the tie beam, and here you have the vertical. It's going to be your your column. And your columns are actually going to provide most of the support for your uh, compression, which is your weight that's bearing down on your house. Uh, they're also going to provide the support for the at the interconnection right here, which I was saying earlier that this is the most most important section right here, connecting your column to your tie beam right here, and all the way up to about this point right here. Oh, although the entire section is very important. Uh, you want to make sure that this point right here, which is your critical connection right here, is done correctly. And how do you know that it's done correctly? Well, basically, if you have a, uh, a plan that was designed by an architect and it was approved by a structural engineer at a city level, it should be good to go. And uh, <clears throat> things that you want to look out for, though. For some reason, I'm getting some folks that are actually asking me questions about, is my plan good? Or they're saying, oh, I would rather do this myself instead of hiring a contractor and things like that. Well, if you're doing that, that's fine. Uh, just make sure that the people that you hire, uh, make sure that they're actually putting everything together properly. And I'll give you a few signs of things to look out for uh, to make sure that things are being put together correctly. So anyway, when they are doing your connection here and you, they're actually designing your tie beam, Make sure that your tie beam has more of the stirrups here. These are stirrups, these round sections that connect around here, and the ones that will go, that look just like this, that go up the column. Uh, those, are, those are called ties, and I'll explain uh, a little bit of the difference between those. But when you're looking at your tie beam, make sure you have more in the section that's right next to the column, which you see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And, and then they're spaced out a little bit wider as they go further on down. Uh, be, of course, this is your critical joint right here. Also, you'll see them, they will go around and around and around on your column. You don't see it here, because um, we're in the early stages of, uh, of this section right here, but they will, be, they will have it going up once they complete it. So anyway, let, let's talk a little bit about a couple of terms that, that you should know and be familiar with when it comes to rebar reinforcement. And that's a term called a shear and a, a term called bend. There's, there's many, many terms when it comes to that, but this is only a basic uh, uh, steel reinforcement 101 kind of a, uh, uh, education for us today. So anyway, when, when they have these that are going around and they will do just like these uh, stirrups here, they'll have one, they'll have, and they're called ties that go around here. And what they'll do, they'll go around at certain levels all the way up. And what, the, what that's gonna do, we wanna make sure that we have shear strength on the on the columns of course the, co the columns have uh, compression because everything is pushing down now in the event of a uh, a natural uh, disaster like an earthquake uh, you can have a catastrophic failure of a column and the way you prevent <clears throat> a catastrophic failure or you do your best so that your building survives and you survive if you're inside the building is you put these uh, ties around here and what will happen is if there's a failure if you didn't have the ties what could happen is this whole st this will be like you see the column down here that's already in concrete if it did not have these ties around it then these uh, steel reinforcements here could actually bend outward and your building could actually collapse and fall fall down so these ties actually provide support so that you don't have any sheer um, catastrophic failure so your, your building will be able to sustain uh, earthquakes and natural disasters like that and 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 you do the same with the with the uh, 
with the tie beams here you'll see the these all have the stirrups all the way around and a stirrup and a, and a and a <clears throat> and a tie around here are basically the same thing they're made of the same thing i don't i really don't know why they call them different things but um, the, the, the main purpose of these is also going to be for the integrity of the beam so that you don't have shear but also that you don't have uh, uh, it, it helps with the bend characteristics and these are all physical properties uh, of the uh, of the steel reinforcement again defined by the structural engineer um, <clears throat> so anyway let's talk about a couple more things you'll notice when if 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 you are building yourself uh, and you don't have and even if you have a contract coming in and you want to do some checks and balances, you want to make sure, like I said, that these are spaced out closer and you have more in this area than you do in a center part. You also want to look at your steel reinforcements for your lateral a portion of reinforcement for your beams. You see the way these aren't equi equidistant. They're not here, then here, then here, then here. The way they have they're here, then you have the big focus on the top portion of your beam. But also you have an additional piece of reinforcement right here at the joint and then you're going to do the same but at the bottom in the center and these are all going to be designed based upon the characteristics of the bend when you put weight on the uh the tie the tie beam uh the tie beam is going, that's going to be the support for your floor area uh if you see your contractor and he is just putting like i said if it if you're your beam looks exactly like your column where they're all equidistant running across and they're just doing a connection uh, then you need to call him out on that because that's not correct uh, methodology for you for actually uh, doing the the build of your tie beams you need to have different types of supports in different areas inside your tie beams like this one has right here again the additional support here more on the top portion and then in the very center on the bottom in the center section of the of the tie beam now all, all of this information can be found in the National uh, Structural Code of the Philippines. It's, it's a document that has guidelines that you can use to go by uh, how to actually design buildings and do structural support inside the, in the Philippines. And there's a subsection inside there that's, that's, that's uh, called Details of Reinforcement. And they will give you the information. And these are the guidelines that your architect is going to go by. And these are also the guidelines uh, that the structural engineer who's going to do the approval uh, at the city level is going to be going by the specific code. And the code is actually very good over here. So make sure that uh, your builder or your crew that's building this for you actually uh, knows this and if they're, if they're reputable, if it's a reputable builder, if it's a reputable architect, they will be very familiar with this uh, document. So anyway, my, my contractor's here and I'm going over some of the, the drawings and I'm looking at the fence line and I <laughs> I noticed there, there's another error. It's a, it's a, it's an easy fix in my mind, is it, but it's going to take a little bit more digging. What what I noticed? Remember, I told you that we have eight eight holes. I think I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's eight that are supposed to be along the back. And what well, all these holes are supposed to be when you put your columns up for your fence. All your col and it is by the design of the architectural design that I have, and I'll show you a picture of that. All of these are supposed to be equidistant from that corner to this corner over here. And uh, when you look at it, you're going to see, it's obvious. Uh, you see this corner right here? This corner right here, it's like half a meter. Three meter, three meter, three meter, three meter, three meter. So anyway, we're going to, I identified to him and he's going to, they'll do a correction. So it will be equidistance all the way along. But these are things that you, you need to catch early. I wish I would have caught this when I was, um, uh, first looking at them digging the holes, but I didn't realize that until I, I saw that uh, Actually a couple of days ago. I'm like, huh, oh, that's kind of strange But he's gonna take care of that. So so what we're gonna do now you can see he's measuring uh, Over there right now, so we don't get all the way and do 15 or 20 18 16 holes whatever it is on this side over here and they don't have to do the correction because they're gonna have to correct each one of these on the back side um, they're gonna have to trim it off so that we have equidistance. So they're gonna make the correction right now and uh, uh, and he, He's gonna mark off Everything from the front corner to the to the back corner back here. So we have Equal amount of spaces between each one of the fences and I asked them also too when we go on these on this side right here from that corner 
all the way and it's going to turn on the uh, the curve up there to where the front gate is going to be um, that makes sure that we have equidistance there too so he'll make sure that that happens before any more of the, <laughs> the footer holes are, are dug out. Well, anyway, the guys are back to work. Lunch is over, and uh, they're doing their respective duties and details and jobs here on the site. So anyway, I thought to myself, well, this would be a great time to do a Bahai Kubo time session. I haven't done one in quite a while, and a lot of it has to do with, uh, uh, it's been kind of windy this whole week. And with the wind, uh, it adds additional uh, challenges with the, with the camera. And I try to make the uh, audio and the video quality as good as possible if I can. Uh, so I got this makeshift, <laughs> this makeshift uh, windscreen going on right now with the with the camera. So hopefully it's it's effective. We'll see when I uh, listen to it later on. Anyway, I was chatting with my wife this morning on Skype, and she said, "You know, you haven't done a Bahai Kupo time session in a while." She said, "And we've been getting a lot of comments on the on the uh, on the vlog uh, that has to do with people actually uh, meeting." Uh, ladies over here, and it normally is that. It's normally there are expats around the world to meet a beautiful Philippine over here, uh, whether they come visiting over here, or whether they meet them on the internet, or however, and 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 they meet what they think is the the soulmate of their hearts, and uh, they start making plans, and they start making plans very early, uh, and and this is what I want to talk about and focus on today in the Bakupo time session is uh, sometimes you make you need to make sure that you think with your head. I mean, it's good to think with your heart because that's how you can share your true emotions, but you also have to have common sense and, and, and actually think with your head. And a lot of times our heart uh, doesn't allow us to do things like that. It stands in the way. And I've seen so many, uh, so many stories, and I've heard so many stories, and I've seen uh, so many stories with uh, people that I've worked with and uh, I've seen stories shared about folks coming over here, uh, and they'll meet somebody. And I'll, I'll give, just give you a couple of uh, um, examples. Is there are folks that will actually send money? They 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 meet up uh, with a young Filipina, and uh, and they have what they call their love uh, connection, and and they think, oh well, she truly loves me, and uh, and and maybe she does, uh, but a lot of the times she doesn't. <laughs> And what happens is they actually they're drawing you in to be able to get money from you, and the, and and the expat will send money over, and uh, because they think what they're going to do with the money is they're going to build a house, and then they're going to come over, the expat's going to come over, and join up and start living with that person inside the house. Uh, well, they send the money over and they do build a house, but unfortunately, what they find out sometimes is that young Filipina actually has a husband already and actually has one, two, three children already. So uh, uh, that's one example. And some other examples are people actually, uh, they, they meet up with somebody and they spend a short amount of time and they actually come over and they get to spend time uh, with their girlfriend or what they call fiancé that they established over, over the internet, over mail or over the telephone. And they do it in a short time, and then they come over, and they do the same thing. Uh, and they they purchase uh, or spend the money to purchase uh, or build the house. And then when all is said and done, uh, somebody does move into that house, and it's usually not the expat. It's usually the Filipina and her family, or the Filipina and that unknown husband or boyfriend uh, that they're unaware of. So the, the, the whole point to the story is, uh, like I said at the very beginning, you need to think with your head and not your heart. You combine the two together, but you need to let the, uh, your head uh, outweigh everything with common sense that your heart is doing. And this is my recommendation. Uh, if you do find somebody, give it time because time is like uh, a relationship. It is like the foundation of your house. It's just like the foundation of the house that we're building here. We're we're taking our time. 
uh, we're making it strong and then it will be strong for the rest of the time the period that we're going to live in it and a relationship is just like the foundation of a house uh, you need to take your time with that relationship uh, you need to visit the person back and forth I will tell you this I spent five years dating my wife uh, before we actually got married and uh, I'm not saying that five years is, is the magic time frame but certainly five months or one month or two months or three months, certainly uh, I don't believe that can be uh, an adequate amount of time to be able to prepare properly so that you have a long-term, uh, stable relationship with somebody. Okay, and that is, that is my opinion. Again, there, there has been uh, moments and opportunities where people have met and they've fallen in love at first sight, and, and those things have worked. But I will tell you, statistics show... That that is the that is the uh, exception. That is not the rule. It's a very small uh, case of uh, folks that that actually happens to. So again, my recommendation is, if you find someone and you fall in love with somebody, uh, take the time uh, to establish the relationship and uh, come over and visit and uh, meet the family and uh, and then work on it at that point. Again, a strong foundation. That's the that's the whole. Uh, key to success for a relationship and then coming over and building a house and starting a family. Again, that's my uh, Bahikupo time uh, topic of the day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, let's get back to construction. Another earthquake, 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 earthquake. You feel it? You feel it? You feel it? <laughs> yeah, another, another, yeah, another one. Ah, we just had another earthquake. <laughs> well, well, I was editing the, the uh, video. Oh, man. It is. Let's see. 309. So if you check your uh, the news at 309, <laughs> there was an earthquake here at the uh, Batangas. Another one. Oh, here's another one. Oh, aftershock. Whoa! 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 Ah, <laughs> oh, Bahi Kubo is still rocking! <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Aftershock at 310. Oh, it's still going. It's still moving. If the body kubos are rocking, don't come a knocking. Any more? I don't know if you could see, but I don't know if I had the camera, but you could see all the rebar wobbling back and forth on the uh, the columns uh, when the uh, the earthquake just hit. You better build me an earthquake-proof house. I don't know, maybe we're, we're digging too deep and fracking into the earth or something. <laughs> anyway, I, I did a quick check of everything. Everything looks good. I don't, I don't see any issues down here. Uh, guys are back. They, they stopped and we were, we were getting so many of the uh, aftershocks, the guys. And with good reason, the guys got out and they, they sat over there for about 30 minutes before they jumped back inside the pit again. <laughs> Uh 
437. It's just about five o'clock, so I'm going to close out the video for today. Uh, wasn't that quite, it was an interesting day. Uh, again, I always say I never know what to expect when I come uh, to the job site, and today was no exception. Uh, with, with the work that was going on here with the earthquake and the aftershocks that went on. Oh, I just wanted to mention, I received a phone call from my niece, you know my niece Minerva, and she was actually in Batangas at the epicenter when the, uh, when the earthquake hit. It was the strongest down there, it was a 5.9 there, and I believe the recorded uh, amount here in Lipa was 5.0. And uh, she called me to let me know that she was okay, and on, uh, they just it was just a, it's a lot of rocking and rolling going on down there as well, and she didn't hear of any other damage uh, on that 5.9 down there. So I was glad she called me. I feel much better. I didn't know she was going down there, though. So, anyway. so thank you for calling me, Minerva, and I'm glad you and Miguel are doing fine, and I look uh, forward to your safe return either back here or back up in Manila. So anyway, uh, again, uh, they did a lot, a lot of comps. You can see, uh, like I was showing earlier, uh, that they actually are starting to do the formwork around the sides of the, the the tie beams inside there. So that means we're we're getting very good progress on there. So we'll be doing and continuing these these actions here next week, uh, and until we get to the point where it's actually going to be the big pour. So I'm looking forward to that. But I want them to do all of this as accurately and detailed and precise as, as possible, especially with the recent events of <laughs> uh, the tremors and and things that are going on around here. So so anyway, I'm going to pack up everything. I might do just a little bit of video editing before I leave because I was invited to a birthday party. Uh, Radamil, you remember Radamil, the one that's got the koi fish? And uh, he, he had his birthday party is today. So uh, I plan on attending that and uh, that might go into several hours late into the evening. But it is Saturday night and I do not have to get up for work tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday. So I'm going to prepare and get out of here, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, uh, please share, and if you have not subscribed, uh, click on that little heart down there in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and uh, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be notified when new uh, uh, videos are posted. So, anyway. so until next time, which is going to be build day 43. 43 on the uh, the building here at Villa Feliz. Uh, you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you then.